Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix and today I am joined once again with Minho. I dried his bitch ass into another session. <laughs> oh my god. I, I, it's true, I did. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna read more Harvey X Reader and, and then once we get done we'll, we'll implement the wheel. Cause the wheel Yay. is such a good feature. I forgot what the wheel was. Oh, I can send you a, a sample of me and Coda's, but it's just basically, we just put a bunch of shit on a wheel that we don't mind reading, and then we spin it at the end of each session, and that tells us how screwed we are the next time we get on a session oh, together. God. Oh, we've had some funny ones. Like, we had to read Italia, we had to read Shadow X Reader. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's some bad some, ones uh, on the wheel. BL on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm doing with the one with Peter. I'm like, alright, just, just fill the shit with BL, and you'd be like, yes! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'll, laughs> I don't think it's out yet by the time this video goes out but like me and Coda are reading Zosan and it got to an end of a chapter and it says yeah we next chapter I'm like oh but we promised to end the chapter here what should we do and we're like I know at least one person out there would like it and it's Peter so we gotta continue <laughs> <laughs> it would be Peter yeah so we're like the deal for you Peter <laughs> shout out to Peter the yeah. lover yeah, it's straight up BL lover. <laughs> He's got like a flag in this room that's like BL. Actually? <laughs> I don't think so, but I feel like it's on brand. <laughs> I wouldn't be immensely surprised. Me either. If I just walked into his room one day and he's got like this, <laughs> this fucking flag of like two guys kissing. Oh god. <laughs> two um, guys, one flag. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yep. Alright, so chapter four. What a what a what a segue! <laughs> <laughs> All right, chapter four, smooth recovery. I'm trying to find something that near me that is not breakable for me to flip. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, what is this? Can I throw this without it breaking? I just found. Why are you throwing stuff? Well, I well, it's it's to show who goes first. I usually flip my remote, but I don't have a remote with me this time. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm gonna flip the the gas X package that I have. You should flip a. Uh, do you have a marble? No. You said a marble? Yeah, you should flip that. I don't think that's gonna work. All right. Yeah, heads or tails for the marble. <laughs> Marbles are round. Oh. All right, so there's this gas X thing. All right, so do you want to be the side that says gas X, or do you want to be the side that has the drug facts? Um, the gas X. Okay. Gas X. <laughs> All you, buddy. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Okay. Sorry. A few days had passed. You were instructed to stay at the clinic by Harvey to ensure your stitches would not rupture with the movement of walking. Your injury, though painful, was healing well and Dr. Harvey had given you the all clear to return to your light daily activity. As long as that didn't include any heavy duty tasks, such as swinging an axe or worse, mining an ore. We don't want to as go back walk... in the mines after <laughs> we didn't want to no, go back? No, not after the slime. <laughs> we Never. got slimed a little too hard. <laughs> <laughs> too much. As you walked out of the clinic, you inhaled the fresh air of Stardew Valley. They said it. They said the line. Oh my god, they Feeling referenced! Grateful to... <laughs> <laughs> Feeling grateful to be out of the hospital bed and back on your feet, finally. You gently stress your arms and legs, testing out your range of motion, feeling a sense of relief as you realize that you are not experiencing any major discomfort. However, as you start to walk, you feel a slight twinge in your injured limb. A reminder of the trauma it endured on your foolish venture. However, you pushed through the twinges, determined to get back to your usual routine. You decided to take a slow stroll through the valley, taking in the sights and sounds of springtime. The birds were singing, the flowers were blooming, and the gentle breeze carried the scent of freshly cut grass. You felt grateful to be alive and healthy, and you vowed in that moment to take better care of yourself in the future to prevent any future injuries or setbacks like this incident again. As you pass by, you notice Jody in the distance, approaching with a basket full of fresh veg from Pierce. Hey there, Jody, you called out, waving as she approached. Jody turned towards the sound of your voice, not noticing your presence before, and smiled warmly. Oh, hello, Bill, she replied. 
<laughs> I'm so relieved to see you up and about after that terrible scare you had. She frowned, a concerned tone carrying her, vo her words. I'm okay, Jody. The doctor knows what he was doing after all. Yes, he is a good man, Jody stopped and frowned. Perhaps a lonely man at times too, but he seems content enough. Oh, she might have competition. Why did why did you have to add the lonely man thing to it, bro? <laughs> <laughs> he can get you lonely. He, he can get lonely. You frowned, unable to process what Jody had just claimed. You didn't understand how a man as alluring as himself could be. Lonely? You had instantly assumed him and Maru were a thing. Your mind fluttered Ooh. and rushed to change the subject. Ooh. How's your day going? You asked. It's going well, Jody replied with a smile, lifting her basket of vegetables. I was just buying some fresh produce, she said. I'm planning on making a delicious salad for dinner tonight. Lately, all I have been feeding the boys is Joja Mark food because it is much cheaper. They do seem to enjoy it. However, I'm not too sure it is healthy for their growth. Yeah, well, it's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> it's like going to Walmart and getting food, bro. You like <laughs> 10 Eat all diseases. The cup noodles. Yeah. <laughs> Cup noodles for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yeah, it's like the pack of noodles are like 19 cents. <laughs> yeah. Well, times are tough. I don't blame you. You are always welcome to produce, to produce of mine for cheaper. Oh, to product. I'm stupid. <laughs> welcome to produce of mine for cheaper prices. If you are struggling to afford regular upturned prices, you smile, holding out a metaphorical hand for Jody. That's lovely of you, Bill. Thank you. She grinned. A hopeful tone in her voice as she spoke. I must dash. Dinner won't make itself. Bye, Bill. You waved her goodbye and continued on your journey home. Life in the valley was a sure rewarding one. The townsfolk were full of compassion and warmth for one another. Something not so common in the big city. Alright, I'll pop for you here. Alright, I see how it is. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Current time. It seems like a good transition. Yeah, that was a good... It's like, alright, time skip. <laughs> Current time, 9.23 p.m. It's late as shit. <laughs> you felt your body slump as you finally made your way to your bed. The last couple of days had taken a toll on you, and all you wanted to do was crawl under the covers and sink into your soft mattress. Had you slipped into the bed, you felt the cool sheets and fluffy pillows envelop you, easing the tension in your muscles. You pulled the covers over your chin and let out a deep sigh, feeling the weight of the day fall away from you. The only sounds in the room were soft chirpings of crickets and the gentle rustling of the wind outside. Where's our dog? <laughs> Did we have a dog? That's all you care about? That's all I care about, honestly, too, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, like, I thought I thought we had him. Maybe he ran away while we were at the clinic. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, fuck this shit. I'm going away. <laughs> you close your eyes and let out a trickling of the valley wash over you, feeling grateful of your smooth recovery. As you drift out to sleep, you can't help but think about the progress you've made on your farm and the relationships you have built with the locals. You felt a sense of contentment, knowing that you were finally exactly where you're meant to be. It only took our grandfather dying for us to get to this place. <laughs> That's awful, sorry. <laughs> The following day, <laughs> you pushed open the door of the Star Drop Saloon and stepped inside. This was still a place you yet to venture due to yourself repressing the need to drink so often like you did back in the city. The room was warm and inviting. The sounds of laughter and chatter filled the air. You take a deep breath and inhale the delicious aroma of the food and drinks, feeling your stomach rumble with anticipation. As you make your way to the bar, you couldn't help but notice the friendly faces of the locals gathered around the room. You smile away, feeling welcomed in the tight-knit community of Stardew Valley. Holy shit, another reference! <laughs> they said it! They said it! They said the, they said the name of the game! <laughs> what was that meme like? Say the line, Bart. Oh, I don't remember what it is. Yeah, that is the line. Yeah. Stardew Valley. Oh. You, <laughs> you take a seat at the bar in order... A drink of beer. Why the fuck beer? Beer's nasty. Get a Okay, beer. beer is nasty, and unfortunately, it has grown on me because of Nick. <gasps> Duh, dude. You gotta get, like, a like a black rum and coke, dude. That's that's what you do. Actually, oh, black rum, rum and Dr. Coke Pepper. Oh, yeah, that sounds good, too. Yeah. I haven't tried that before. For legal reasons. Uh, that's my friend drinks, not me, because I'm not 21. <laughs> 
for legal reasons. All right, we'll replace beer with juice. Yeah. <laughs> Another what yeah. is the plugin? <laughs> juice. <laughs> I'll just use the juice that I said to just put over. <laughs> <laughs> You take a seat at the bar and order a drink of beer, feeling the cool glass on your hand. The bartender, Gus, smiles and strikes up a conversation with you, mainly about your mining accident. Does everyone, like, know that we fucked up in the mines? <laughs> yeah, word spreads fast. Yeah, it, it made the headline of the newspaper. <laughs> Not a lot <laughs> happens in this town. Bill fucks up. <laughs> That's just the headline. It was like a picture of us, like, dead out, like, like, passed out. Lines. Yeah. It's like the Peter Griffin pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's the picture they took for the, the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> he also asked about your farm and how you've been settling it. That's nice. Instead of just talking about how I fucked up with the mines. Nice. Uh -huh. You haven't seen Dr. Harvey since you've saved you from your injuries, but you managed to thank Robin and Merlin for discovering you and rescuing you from the mines. You made sure they knew how much gratitude you held for both of them, offering them free crops and produce from your farm, which they refused to take for sheer curiosity. You actually noticed Robin sat at the table talking with her husband, Demetrius. Noticing your gaze, she smiled and waved at you, which, to which you re, re precipitate doing the same thing in return. You continue to glance around the room, taking in the lively atmosphere. But suddenly, you hear a voice to your left. Hey there, do you mind if I sit here? Turning your head, you see a woman with long red hair and freckles, smiling with a welcoming fashion, a paintbrush on her overall pocket. Leah was the only person you haven't managed to f fully con-, con What? <laughs> converse? Fully converse with. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's supposed to be fully. Fully converse with, yet. Yeah. So this felt nice and almost like an- God damn it, what are up with these words? A <laughs> accomplishment. accomplishment. <laughs> you can say that I one. can't fucking read. You know how embarrassing it was for me in, like, middle school, like, eighth grade, to take, like, the I ready thing and then be told that I have a third grade reading level? <laughs> 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 that's what, that, is, that was, that's a canon event in my time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Like an accomplishment, because I know how to read, knowing that you had greeted everyone in town properly. Of course not. Please do. You replied eagerly, gesturing to the NPC next to you. Leah takes a seat and orders a drink, smiling warmly at you, and she goes to talk again. You're the new farmer, huh? How's the farm treating you? She asks. You grin, excited to talk about your farm. It's going great, actually. I'm getting the hang of things, and I'm really starting to see some progress. Leah nods and takes a sip of her drink. That's awesome to hear. I'd be meaning to swing by and see how you're doing. That would be great, you reply. I could definitely use some advice by someone with some more ex experience. <laughs> Leah chuckles. Well, I don't know about that, but I'll, have, I'll be happy to help in any way I can. You both chat for a while, discussing the ups and downs of farming, and you share mutual in- Fuck. And your shared mutual love for natural beauty of the valley. All right, you wanna you wanna go ahead? <laughs> yep. It was great talking to you. She says, giving you a warm smile. Let's catch up again soon. You agree with a friendly smile, and Leia 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 <laughs> leaves you alone once more at the bar. You finish the remainder of your drink and proceeded to check the time on the clock. It's getting late. He said to yourself, knowing you should really be following Leia out at this hour. Good evening, Miss Cypher. A familiar voice echoes in your ear, sending electric shivers through your body. Did we get tased? You got tased and greeted at the same time. You turn to see Harvey. His cheeks are rosy from the cold outside on the unusual crisp spring night. He looks down and meets your gaze, his eyes on the surface seeming bright and friendly. It's seeming more devious and alluring the longer you stare into them. A small smile tugs at the corners of his lips, and you can't help but feel your heart racing as he passes you. Hmm. Glad to see you have made a full recovery, Harvey adds. Approaching Gus as if he is going to ask the bar center a question. Yes, thank you, doctor. The encounter was formal and definitely stuck to the codes and conventions of doctor-to-patient dialogue. 
but there was definitely an underlying tension between the two of you. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. We're getting Roman. <laughs> that electric shiver is not the only thing going down your body. Yeah. <laughs> Gus, that taser really ask. did something. <laughs> Gus, I must ask, was Shane in here tonight? Who cares about Shane? Yeah. Are there any questions? No, I'm just kidding. That's not what it said. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Wait, are there any questions? <laughs> yes, but he left with me. Morning. His alcohol consumption was much better tonight. Gus responds. Yippee. <laughs> Yippee. This is a Shane Hate Club. We hate Shane. <laughs> Shane Hate Club. Woo. Woo. <laughs> you had heard about Shane. He was known to be cold and callous and an idiot to newcomers and the townsfolk in general. And that was proved right by your previous interactions with this man. The first time you ever spoke to him, you were told to leave him alone, which left a sour taste in your mouth. However, you hadn't realized that he had a tendency to drink in large amounts at a single time. Oh, yeah, he's an alcoholic. Yeah, definition. Of, if you ever looked at the definition of alcoholic, a picture with Shane would be in the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Just leave it to check before you close, Harvey. Uh, Harvey's devotion to his patients was admirable, and you couldn't help but sneak a smile in this direction. Once Harvey had finished thanking Gus, he had turned back to you, his hair slightly sloping across his forehead as the brisk air from the outside made it droop as such. Miss Cypher, he began. Please, just call me Bill. <laughs> okay, it's so <laughs> weird. It's so weird. <laughs> Why did I choose Bill? I don't know. It's, that was your choice, man. <laughs> yeah, that's my That fault. was a stupid... Yeah. <laughs> I just can't take it seriously now. It says Miss Cypher and Bill in, like, two lines. Dude, Bill it's... Cypher. Dude... <laughs> I literally named the girl Shotgun. This is not the stupidest nickname I've come up with for uh, the, the, the reader. <laughs> <laughs> Please, just call me Bill. You had no problem before with that, you giggled, Harvey cheeks slightly turning red as you corrected him. You longed for a sign of confirmation that he too had imagined the possibilities of you both in time. And that's when he opened his mouth to speak. Oh, um, Bill. Your stitches will be ready to be removed soon, and I wanted to contact you in order to schedule the removal. He felt slightly ajar from his response. He hoped for... Oh, shoot. He hoped for something flirty. But then again, you knew that wasn't right due to your doctor-to-patient relationship. Or, at all possible, due to Harvey's seemingly lack of interest in you anyways. Oh, Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll pop for you. Alright. Oh, thank you. Any time this week was fine is good for me. Okay, how does Tuesday 9 a.m. sound to you? He questioned. That sounds like a good time. Thank you. You pause. It's getting late. I should head home now. Sorry to burst your bubble. I only came here to check Shane. Let me walk you home. It's dark and, and it's certainly not worth taking any risks walking alone at this time of night. This... <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. This the first thing that reminded me of this shit was like, is the the old Harvey X reader I read with Coda, and it was like Harvey got jumped and thrown into a bush. Oh God. Yeah. So like when they mentioned like walking, like you don't know what's gonna happen at night. I'm like, yeah, you might have a bush moment. <laughs> Just get your shit stolen and thrown in a bush. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure I'll be okay. Please, I insist. Think of it as a friend doing another friend a favor. Only if you're sure. It's getting late. Of course I am sure. You both escape the saloon, Harvey holding the door open for you as you leave. As you walk side by side, you couldn't help but feel a sense of comfort and safety with Harvey by your side. You notice his gentle eyes fixate on you as you shiver. Shiver? <laughs> Please, take my coat. It's far too cold to be walking... What? <laughs> it's far too cold to be walking about in only a... Okay. I, I don't know why the about really threw me off. <laughs> <laughs> walking about is like... I feel like that's like a British kind of sentence. Uh, You're walking about... Oh my god, I can't deal with another fucking British headcanon from Stardew Valley people. <laughs> he kind of, the way he's been talking, he kind of sounds British from his dialogue. Yeah, I already have a headcanon that Elliot's probably British, so... 
<laughs> Why you not? Read it all in British accents now. I don't know how to do a British accent. <laughs> Unless you can do a British accent. <laughs> I'll do a failed attempt at one, so uh, I don't want to try. Let's go. <laughs> if only you're sure. You refused to say no to this opportunity, not necessarily because you were cold, but because you had a chance to feel romantically connected to your doctor. <laughs> Something oh that had not stopped you daydreaming of since you last interacted at the clinic. We are down bad. <laughs> down bad. If you looked at the definition of down bad, uh, Bill Cipher will be... <laughs> You feel the, cr the creases of your mouth begin to form a smile as he gently swarms his large jacket around you. It had a warm... It was... Oh, fuck. <laughs> it is a long, warm brown coat that buttons up down the front. Definitely a piece of clothing that has Harvey's name written all over it. I thought he had a green coat. Am I wrong? <laughs> There's no way you remembered a detail like that. What, that he had a green coat? Did he have a green coat? Yeah, I thought he had a green coat. Yeah, I'm yeah. Looking back. Dude, I ha I'm, I'm, I'm married to him in, in Stardew Valley. I have to know what color his coat is. <laughs> <laughs> is he? Does he actually have a green coat? Because I, I feel like if it's brown, it would look weird. I'm trying to look for it in the previous chapters. Let's see. It has the aroma of coffee, presumably from his continued coffee consumption. Yet, you find it endearing. You find that the coat was in instantly warms you, and somehow made you feel safer. Not so cold now? Harvey gently asks, his gaze fixed on the stars above as you walk through the secluded pathways. The stars shown, shown, shine brighter. I don't know what shone. That's stupid. <laughs> it's like a past tense. No, wait. No, it's like a plural tense. Never mind. What? That's stupid. <laughs> the stars shine brighter in the valley. In the city, the stars were just tiny pinpricks in the vast above, barely visible through the haze of light pollution. However, out here in the royal valley, they shone like diamonds in the velvet sky. You follow Harvey's gaze up, and you're on awe at the sheer amount of stars. They sketch out before you in an endless tapestry of light, twinkling and dancing with the vast expanse above. The longer you stare, the more you notice. You see constellations you've never seen before. Patterns and shapes that seem to tell stories of their own. The Milky Way arches overhead like a shimmering bridge, connecting the world above with the, mis the mysteries of the universe above. Okay, that actually sounds like I, I would get into stars after reading that <laughs> That's pretty poetic. Yeah, it was. Holy shit. Good on you, gazelle images. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> gazelle. It's gazelle images. <laughs> what did I even say? <laughs> gazelle images. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, 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 like I said, not not the brightest person or the goodest reader. <laughs> <laughs> All good. You feel a sense of peace, wonder, wash over you as you bask in the glowing of the stars next to Harvey. You realize that this is one of the many things that, that like, that, fuck. It was one of the many things that, that made living in the valley so special. The chance to connect to the natural world in a way that's impossibly amid in the noise and chaos of the urban life. I had the same reaction when I moved from the city. It was something like a dream. Harvey added, forcing you to realize that you must have been visibly in awe at the spectacular sight. Yes, they are rather beautiful. Isn't there a Coldplay song about stars or something? Or am I just getting old? Harvey jokingly oh, added. Reference Coldplay? I don't know what Coldplay is. I'm suing. What? what? No, you don't. You don't give them Coldplay? I don't know what that is. They're a band. You know the song uh, Viva La Vida? What's the name? <laughs> uh, Viva La Vida. Nope. <laughs> really? Dude, I'm like, sure you've heard of it I'm like 20. <laughs> All I've listened to is rock music and shitty, like, fan-made songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I listen yeah. to. Oh, thank you. Alright, now I gotta listen to it after this. And then I'll probably be like, oh, I remember! <laughs> there was like a Minecraft parody of the song, I swear. Really? I gotta look at that later. Or one of the Coldplay songs, there was a Minecraft parody. Like Fallen no, it Kingdom? Was this song. No, it was this song, yes. Okay. I'll, I'll get it later. I don't know how I remember that, but 
I like how you remember there was a Minecraft <laughs> fucking parody too. I think we like listened to it one time at like a party, just unironically. Uh, <laughs> just to reminisce. Just basking in our youth. <laughs> like a <laughs> childhood. <laughs> Harvey joke jokingly added, smiling hopelessly, somehow feeling his age. You giggled. Yes, it happens to be one of my favorites. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Cipher really into Coldplay, apparently. <laughs> I'm suing this fanfic for using the word Coldplay. <laughs> it, it's alright. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me of the lyrics, he commanded, chuckling as he did. Do you expect me to sing? You frowned your brow in a way that communicated an am amused confusion. I only sing when I'm drunk. <laughs> I probably do too at some rate. <laughs> you giggled as you continued your way to the farmhouse. I assume you have consumed enough alcohol tonight, so maybe just pretend. He added, just not letting you escape from your sealed fate. Oh, we're gonna get us singing. That's so cringe. <laughs> no, do you actually have to, like, if they sing, oh. I'm not singing. <laughs> I don't do that shit. Oh, we can do a bad. I'm reading in the most monotone voice ever. <laughs> I warn you, I'm not. It's not going to sound good. You already, you had already predetermined that you're muttering the basic courage to just sing the chorus line. Wait, this is. <laughs> you're a sky full of stars, such a heavenly <laughs> view. <laughs> You the no, you have to reread that. That wasn't good enough. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like that was pretty good. No, it wasn't. No. You reread it. You're a sky full of stars. Such heavenly view. Uh uh uh. <laughs> <laughs> now nice you have to do it again. Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you sung the lyrics precisely and finished the line with a, a giggle filling your cheeks swarm more. Swarm red, knowing that you just embarrass yourself beyond belief. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. You have a very soothing voice, Bill. Good <laughs> job, Bill. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> he raised his brow as, at you as he spoke. Well, I don't know about that, but it definitely it's definitely one of the most embarrassing things I've ever done. He stated, slightly smiling, s slightly hiding your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> You do realize I knew the song all along, right? I just wanted to hear you sing it. He said it ever so calmly. You felt your body quiver, <laughs> knowing that the, the whole awful singing bit was just to, could have been easily avoided if you, if you, wait. <laughs> if easily you hadn't avoid of so easily given it. Okay, yeah, that that fucked me up. <laughs> you, you chuckled. Playfully nudging him as you walked beside you. The doctor version of Harvey was fading, and instead, a more vulnerable and warm side uh, rearing out behind his surface level appearance and tone. He chuckled, clearly proud of himself for fooling you. You see the path ending at the entrance of your farm appearing. As you approach your farm, you feel a twig of sadness inside you, knowing that your time with Harvey was coming to an end. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> He does the gentleman thing and walks you directly to your door, and was clear. It was clear he was taking no chances with your safety. You pause in front of your door, getting ready to take out your keys. You place your keys in the door and twist and pull. The sand door gets harder and harder to open I, each time. I swear, you mutter in frustration tone, feeling slightly embarrassed. Here, let me help. Harvey speaks reassuringly, proceeding to walk. Walk up the steps and twist the key in such a fashion that the door magically opens in front of your eyes. I need me a man that can open a door. Yeah, me, me too! But, That's but, the, uh, one of the basic requirements. Yeah, and then I gotta ask my boy if he can, he can open a door. If not, I'm gonna have to end this. <laughs> after I just moved in with him. Hey Cameron, open this real quick? Yeah. Oh, you can't? Yeah. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'll see ya. Hmm. You make it look so easy, you sighed. Hmm. Maybe I did. Can't really say I'm very strong. Harvey jokingly as he took out the keys from the door and turned it to you turned to you to return it. 
You couldn't understand why he was saying this. Although Harvey may not look like a bodybuilder with his lab coat and puffy jumpers, he possessed a, a more quiet strength. His movements were precise and controlled, and there was a sense of power underneath his calm demeanor, one of which you found extremely attractive. <laughs> Damn. We are down bad. <laughs> I need to be a man with good hand-eye coordination. <laughs> Just get yourself a computer science dude! Like I did! <laughs> <laughs> the silence between, between you had held- wait. The silence between you was held as you gazed at one another almost longingly. Well, I guess I'll be on my way, Harvey said, breaking the tension. Yes, good night. Thank you for walking me home, he replied, taking off Harvey's coat and handing it back to him. Aw, oh, we didn't keep the coat? What the fuck? <laughs> I looked this up too, and his coat is green. You were right. I, see, I, ma I knew I married the right husband. Hey, so hey, yeah. hey. Maybe he has different outfits. You no. can't expect him to wear green every day. Listen, <laughs> I, I can I can envision. <laughs> I mean, he wore a black suit on our wedding day, so he changes it up sometimes. <laughs> I, I better hope he wears something other than a green coat on the wedding. <laughs> it's like, it's my lucky jacket. I can't take it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my pleasure. I'm sure I'll be seeing you around soon. He smiled, turning to leave you. Good night, you muttered. Feeling a little lost. You couldn't help but feel a bit of foolish bit foolish for feeling this way. After all, you only met Harvey recently, and he was just a doctor who had treated you for your injuries. But there was something about him that made you feel comfortable and at, and at ease regarding how long you had known him. You walked him you watched him walk down to the path away from your farm, heading in the direction of the clinic. The spark between you was now your your prime focus until you met again. And you hated it. Why oh, you hated it? I like it! Chapter 5! <laughs> <laughs> Look at the comments. Stop! Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Chapter 5. Could this get any worse? I don't know. I. I. <laughs> it's like the Aaron Hansen thing is like, check this shit out, and he like fucks it up even more. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you know what the fuck I'm talking about with Game Grumps. No. no, no. You have to link me. Okay, I'll, I'll probably link you after it, but there's in Game Grumps, probably someone's made a compilation of it, probably. But, like, every time Aaron Hansen, like, says, like, check this shit out, he ends up fucking up, <laughs> like, really bad in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, it's like, hey, you. It's just a meme at this point? Yeah, it's, it's, so it's just be like, Bill Cypher over here, like, hey, check this shit out, and she just, like, fumbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I think it's your turn now, dude. All right. <clears throat> Chapter five. Can this get any worse? I think it can. <laughs> <laughs> you looked out the window. Once more, it was raining on the valley. The sky was a deep, dark gray, and the sound of rain hitting the roof and the ground was, the ground outside was constant. The air felt heavy with moisture, and the world seemed to be wrapped in a thick blanket of mist. The leaves of the trees and the plants in the fields were seemingly weighed down by the rain, and the normally bright, vibrant colors of the farm were dulled by the overcast sky. You knew you had to trek out into the wet eventually. You had crops that needed harvesting as spring neared its inevitable end. You equipped your wellies and raincoat and opened the door. Hey, Milo. Milo watched from afar, staying firm in his position by let's the fireplace. Let's go! Milo made a return! Milo, let's go! We came back! Yay! <laughs> I didn't think you would want to come outside today, Milo, he sighed in frustration as the sharp rain drops. As the sharp rain drops hit your hands and exposed face. You stepped out into the muddy fields. The crops were ripe and ready to be harvested, but the rain had made them heavy and sodden. You pulled up a parsnip from the ground, the soil sticking to its roots, and placed it in your wheelbarrow. And as you work, <laughs> here we go. As you worked, the rain started to get heavier, but you persisted, knowing that you had to get the crops harvested before they spoiled. And there was no way you could afford to waste any of the precious produce you had spent all spring growing. Finally, after hours of working in the rain, you finished the harvest. Your clothes were soaked through, your boots caked in mud, and your body now aching from the frozen state you found yourself in. 
However, you did feel a sense of satisfaction knowing that you had completed the task at hand despite the weather conditions. However, as you made your way through the fields onto the path, you felt your boot catch on the rock hidden beneath the mud, causing you to trip and fall face first into a puddle of mud <laughs> beneath you. This, this is what I was talking about. She was just like, check this shit out. <laughs> Watch this shit. <laughs> You felt the cold mud seep through your clothes and smear across your skin. Your hair was now plastered to your face, and you could feel the wetness seeping into your shoes. You groaned, cr cursing your clumsiness and the miserable weather. Hey, at least you can, uh, what was that thing called? Uh, a mud mask? Oh yeah, it's all natural and, and everything. <laughs> exactly, you have a mud mask now. Just think of, you're, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm more but, of an empty glass kind of person. Empty <laughs> glass. <laughs> Struggling to push yourself up, you slipped in the mud once more and fell back down. Nice. You let out a frustrated sigh and swear as you realized how hard it was going to be to get up. Almost is as if you were stuck in limbo. Your clothes were heavy with water and mud, making every movement a struggle. With a grunt, you finally managed to stand up and wipe the mud from your face. This day was now worse than the day you nearly died, and you had no <laughs> problem setting something as bold as that. <laughs> you heard scurried footsteps running into the farm. You prayed that it was not Harvey. You would not want him to see you in this sorry state. Oh god, is now a bad time, Bill? A, boy, a familiar voice called out. Yes, yes, it is, you thought to yourself. You turned to see Robin entering the farm on the pathway. She looked more prepared for the bad weather than you. This was an embarrassing sight. Um, maybe a little, you called out, still uh, still wiping away the muddy concoction from your cheeks. <laughs> I just wanted to drop off this letter for you. It arrived in my post for some reason. She called out to you as you began to make your way up the path to the farmhouse where she was stood, under cover from the treacherous weather. Robin popped the letter into your letterbox. Thanks, Robin. You really didn't need to drop that off today, you explained as you approached the farmhouse too. It's no problem. I enjoyed this sweater funnily enough. She go she giggled. <laughs> See you around. I hope that this mud isn't too hard to get off. She winked as she turned to leave. You stripped your boots off at your front door and walked in a peculiar fashion to your bathroom to avoid getting mud all over the floor and furniture. You first stripped and showered, getting the worst of the mud off. You followed the shower by a nice warm bath. Alright, I'll popcorn you here. Dude, a nice warm bath would be so nice right now. <laughs> <laughs> True. After a mud a mud shower, a nice warm bath is nice. Yeah, and we use some of the extra mud for like a, a, a mud mask. Get some worms uh, in there for like nice, like all yeah, natural. Get some worms in there. Eat yeah. some worms for protein, you know, for <laughs> nutrition. Yeah, it, it'll eat all the blackheads off of our face. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> As you sank into the bathtub, you felt your muscles relax. The water was warm and soothing, and you felt as your muscles so relaxed as your heart uh, penetrated your skin. Really? Oh, okay, penetrated your skin. Okay. Oh, the heat. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, if your heart was penetrating your skin, that would oh. be a... I was like, yeah, I read that, that like right? A, what's that medical condition? A hernia? Yeah, a heart attack, heart disease, <laughs> some kind of heart thing. Yep, I was like, yeah, I read pen penetration, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard you say something more pronounced than penetration. <laughs> Must be a practiced word, eh? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know shit. <laughs> As you sink even deeper into the water, you felt the last specks of mud and dirt begin to loosen and wash away. The scent of soap filled the air as you took a deep breath, feeling all your worries and cares slipping away with the suds. You leaned back, closing your eyes and letting the water wash over you. The feeling of the heat seeping into your bones. <laughs> the, warm, the warmth was comforting, like a soft blanket wrapped itself around you. Your mind began to wander as you let yourself drift away, enjoying the peacefulness of the moment. The water was your sanctuary at the moment, your refuge from the chaos of the day. When are we gonna get Harvey back again? I'm sorry. <laughs> I miss my doctor boy. <laughs> After a while, you stood up, feeling refreshed and renewed. You toweled yourself off, 
slipped into clean, dry pajamas. I hope they're dry. You should sleep in a wet pajamas. <laughs> Go to Muddy bed. pajamas. Yeah. More mud. <laughs> Maybe today was meant to be one of relaxation. I don't think it was. We literally slipped in mud twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, does- Soon- the, Isn't the, the- the- the flower dance, like, in spring? Are we gonna get to dance with fucking Harvey? Oh, I think so. That yeah. would make sense. He's like, turns us down. <laughs> He's like, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm not like that. <laughs> I'm not- I don't swing that way, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, day 20, 25th uh, of spring. Today was the day you had your stitches removed from your mining accident. You had you made your way over to the clinic at 8.30, and now you waited outside to enter. Murray welcomed you aside with her casual happy flair. You sat in the waiting room watching Maru file and type away at her computer screen, staring at the door as you anxiously waited for the doctor to come in. Not only would you get your stitches removed today, but you you could you would be seeing Dr. Harvey up close and in person once more. <laughs> Something you've been longing for since the night you parted. <laughs> there you are, Bill. <laughs> Harvey is sure to see as you entered the room. I still love that you named her Bill. That's funny as shit. <laughs> it's just fucking it up now. <laughs> Every single time Bill is right, it just hurts my soul. <laughs> that's, a, that's a you problem, dude. <laughs> I'm having a blast. I'm just imagining fucking what, Harvey is Bill Cipher from from uh, Gravity Falls <laughs> just chilling. <laughs> I'm glad you're having a good time. Yeah. I'm reassured as he entered the waiting room, a weak smile on his face. This way, he gestured as you, as you stood up and followed him to the surgery room. Harvey instructed you to lay on the table as you gently lifted your trousered leg up to reveal the injury. Harvey examined it carefully, trying to determine if the stitches were definitely ready to be taken out to avoid a complication. To avoid a complications. <laughs> okay. Has it been itching a lot? All the time, you replied, a slight chuckle in your breath as you did. Good. That that means it's definitely ready to be removed. You sat nervously on the examination table. You got your chest tightened slightly with anticipation for having a heart attack. <laughs> the memory of the accident had caused the injury was still fresh in your mind, and the thought of having the scissors removed made you feel uneasy. It wasn't a particularly pleasant thing to watch. Just blindfold you. Just look away. That's what I have to do when I get a shot. <laughs> Harvey bought a pair of scissors to your legs, holding them firmly, identifying the first stitch to prepare to cut. The room around you begins to spin as you watch Harvey pull. I don't want to read. <laughs> pull. A Are you squeamish towards this stuff? I don't. I'm about to find out soon. My brain likes to do funny things, like be really in detail. <laughs> You just imagine it? Yeah. Harvey you pulled a stitch out of your skin and you felt a wave of nausea wash over you. Your vision started to blur as you felt your heart racing as your head continued in its panicking frizzy. You tried to take slow, deep breaths to calm yourself down, a matter that would not alarm Harvey of any issues on your behalf. It was no good. <laughs> Harvey had pulled an out another stitch and your body couldn't not handle the sight of it. Just look away! That's what I do when I, like, get a shot, because I can't handle needles. <laughs> you know, a fun fact I heard about taking shots is half the pain is in the visual. Yeah. So if you, like, look away, it, it like, hurts less, because you don't expect it. <laughs> yeah, because, like, cause, like, I was, like, uh, when I got my blood drawn for, like, testing and shit, like, the nurse saw me clamp up, she's like, are you scared of needles? I'm like, yeah, a little bit. She's like, alright, I need you to look away, and I, she was like, it's still at me, and I'm like, trying to look at it, and she's like, no, 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 do not look at it! <laughs> she's like, putting my, 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 my face away from <laughs> You know, some nurses are so bad at shock. I'm like, I look away, and I still feel pain. Like, five seconds later, I look back, she's still, the shot's still in my arm, I'm like, get it out! Yeah. Like, I didn't feel pain after it, the shot was done, but, like, I was driving to work, because, like, after I got done, I had to go to work, and, like, oh, I was, like, almost at the office, and then I felt this sharp pain where they just stabbed me to get my blood drawn. 
<laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? It was like it was like 20 minutes afterwards, and it like hurt like shit. <laughs> I think the worst part about shots is the pain you feel after you get the shot. Yeah. Like the next day, you can't even raise your arm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that that sucks. <laughs> However, Harvey must have noticed your distress through through your not so stable body language and quickly placed down his equipment to rush to your aid. Suddenly, everything went black. We wake up in the little like carrier, and he's like, "Oh, have you awakened?" <laughs> <laughs> You're awake. We're trying to cross the border, right? Yeah, I'm sure I remember what it was. It was from Skyrim, right? Yeah, it was from yeah. Skyrim. When you gained your conscience, you found yourself still lying on the exam table. Harvey was looking down at you, concern uh, etched on his face. Bill, are you there? He asked, his hand on your shoulder, rubbing it slightly in a reassuring manner. You groaned, feeling embarrassed and disoriented. I I'm sorry, you muttered. I don't know what happened. I just freaked out seeing the stitches being pulled out. He went upon remembering it. It's all right, he said, reassuring, helping you sit up slowly and hand you a cup of water. You felt comforted and safe when Harvey reassured you like this, almost as if Harvey could save you from anything. He was, he was stood above you, inches away from your body. It's not uncommon for patients to feel faint during minor procedures like this. He added. <laughs> While we're past that, he just like took all the stitches up. <laughs> <laughs> Also, why don't we keep looking? You can just turn your head. We're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you nodded, taking a sip of, of the cup, slightly feeling better. I'm sorry for passing out, you repeated, feeling slightly embarrassed by your fridge. Fragility. fragility. Yep. Bill, that's something you cannot help. He paused, sighing. For future reference, just let me know when you feel faint next time. He spoke gently, walking back over to the stool to return to his duties. Close your eyes, I'm going to return to my work. He instructed and you listened. Just fucking blindfold her. <laughs> 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 In the span of no more than five minutes, Harvey had successfully removed the stitches from your leg. You can open your eyes now. You glanced down at your leg, a large scar now where the open wound once was. That should continue to hear nicely now. However, I do have to put you on a work band so you don't have to reopen it by accident. He frowned, almost as if he knew the inconvenience this would cost you. We work on a farm! We can't just take a day off! <laughs> <laughs> My crops! <laughs> Farmers are busy people. Yeah, they. Yeah, this bitch gets up at 6 a.m. every day. <laughs> That's okay, you replied. I finished harvesting my crops earlier today. Good timing had blushed you. I hear that you had quite quite accident prone, hence my cautioning. Harvey said in a non casual manner, was putting you was whisk putting the used equipment into a bag for cleaning. Where did you hear that? You in interrogated, curious as to who he was referring to. I heard that Robin found you covered in mud from head to toe, as if you had tripped in the rain. A side oh, smile escaped his yeah, what a fucking bitch. She's like, she's like the gossip, like, mom around here. <laughs> she probably is. Well, she probably is. Maybe Jody as a, as a second contender to that. <laughs> she told you? She, you, fuck. <laughs> you quizzed. <laughs> Slightly annoyed. Well, she told Mayor Lewis, who told me. He added, that's embarrassing. You sighed, unable to defend yourself or lie out of out of it. No, it's normal. These accidents do happen after all. You mentioned trying not to make you trying to make you, I thought this said trying to not make you feel better <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make you feel better about your clumsiness. You're all done. Thank you, doctor. You spoke smiling without realiz without realizing. Just remember to take it easy for the rest of the day. And if you're feeling faint again, come back and see me. I'll make sure- why are they fucking italicize it? I'll make sure you're alright. <laughs> I'll make sure you're alright. You feel your your heart flutter at his suggestion. You are just- you, you was just being a friendly doctor, surely? There is no underlying flirting in that sentence, was there? You can help but ponder these questions as you felt your cheeks flush of a shade of pink. Harvey insists- 
the Jew off the table. Get home safe, he concluded, wrapping your coat back around you. You felt hopeless in this moment. Your heart was flushing and every oh, fluttering in each and every interaction you had with this man. Even when you walked through the fields of your farm, tending to your crops, your heart would occasionally flutter to a thought of Dr. Harvey, remembering mm. the nights he walked you home. You couldn't help but wonder if it would be like... Would it... Fuck. You couldn't help but wonder what it would be like to be with him. To be... To feel his strong arms around you with his gentle touch on your skin. No? Mm. <laughs> Harvey, you quite <laughs> snap you out of your daydream. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Doctor. I'll, I'll see you around. You quickly scare her off. Your feelings, your uh, your thoughts following. It'd be funny if she just said that monologue out loud. Yeah. <laughs> and he just said, Bill? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> I just work here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I would have loved it at the end. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, sorry. My bad. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, uh, water my fish. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, last chapter we'll be reading. Chapter 6. Let's go at the beach. Like the... I forgot the name of the song. Isn't it called Starships? I forgot who wrote it, though. Starships? You mean the Nicki Minaj one? Yeah, like the first line is like, let's go to the beach. <laughs> Let's, let's go to the beach. Let's go to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I've never... I haven't heard that song in a while. Yeah. I'm going to listen to that right now, now. As I read this chapter, I'm going to listen to Starships. Yeah. <laughs> on repeat. Until the chapter's over. <laughs> Alright, go ahead, dude. You got it. <laughs> Were you, when you played Stardew, were you like a fisher? You liked fishing more or farming more? Farming more. I, I introduced my boy to it, and he immediately went to fishing. Oh my god, I swear. We're all the same, because I just love fishing. I don't know why, it's just so, I don't know. I just, I just have to fish. Yeah. If there's fishing in a game, I have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I was playing, but like... I was like, I'm about to pull a pull a camera right now. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm about to go fishing right now. <laughs> I did like research on all the fishes I could get, and then you get like a legendary fish each season. Yeah, camera. Yeah, he got his legendary fish, and it had like a little crown. But he's like, he thought it was a sombrero on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Go. Okay. Chapter six. Let's go to the beach. Day four of summer. You woke. Spring had passed and summer had risen on the valley. Already you had gained a large taste of what the... Oh my god, this, this Starship song is so loud. I turned <laughs> out that... You actually are listening to it. Yeah, of course I am. <laughs> okay. Spring had passed and summer had risen on the valley. Already you had gained a large taste of what, had, what the summer could offer in the rural countryside. Summer on the farm seemed like a lively time of year with uh, warm sunshine and a pleasant breeze blowing through the fields. The air was filled with the sweet scent of blooming flowers, and your newly planted crops were already thriving. The sounds of birds chirping and insects buzzing could be heard all around, creating a soothing sympathy, a symphony of nature that you listen to like a favorite song. <laughs> I know what our favorite song is right now, and it's Starships. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like having trouble reading these because there's like lyrics going on. All right, you found yourself busy and the days were long and filled with hard work, but you enjoyed the feeling of satisfaction that came with watching your crops grow and flourish. You had finally named your farm too, deciding on Tulip Farm as it reminded you of your mother. Tulips had been her favorite flower. This is as inaccurate. Is <laughs> my, mother does not, my, 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 my mother does not like tulips, thank you very much. <laughs> what does she like? I actually don't know. She doesn't like flowers. Roses. That's so fucking cliche to get roses, though. Hey, roses are pretty nice. You know? I, yeah, but like, it's more important to get other flowers instead of roses. Roses can be expensive. Hmm. They probably are, yeah. Mm -hmm. As the sun set each day, you developed a routine where you could relax on your porch and take in the stunning summary. The stunning summary scenery. Wow, that's. Uh, a lot of S's. <laughs> 
What is that called again in like a poem where it's like the same consonant of each word? I alliteric? Didn't, I didn't think that was a thing, but <laughs> it might be. <laughs> I'm just a nerd again. <laughs> the sky was always many brilliant shades of amber and pink, and occasionally fireflies danced in the warm evening air in front of you. It was a time for relaxation and reflection, something of which you would have never experienced in the confines of the city. Summer was also a time for community events, like the annual Lao and the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies. You have been preparing, purposely growing high-quality ingredients for the soup. Oh yeah, I thought I forgot that was a thing where you had to like get specific ingredients for the we thing. We can, can just throw uh, Mayor Lewis's underwear in there. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> As you attended your tasks for the day, you saw a group of familiar faces approach the entrance to your farm. It was Emily, Haley, and Leah, all with bags full of what looked like towels and sunscreen. <laughs> sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> sunscreen. Cool. Yeah. Bill, Haley bowed, smiling at you. Originally, she was distant and dismissive towards you when you first arrived in Pelican Town, but as time went by, Haley began to warm up to you. She saw how well you connected with the other villagers and decided that maybe you weren't the original evil she took you up for. What the fuck, <laughs> Haley? <laughs> she just saw you and said, evil. <laughs> One spring day, as you were walking past Haley's house, she called you out from her doorway. She apologized for her ill attitude, and since then, you had been good friends. We are heading to the beach, and we all would love if you came, Leah announced before Haley, making her expression change to a more defeated one. You felt slightly overwhelmed. You were not prepared to go to the beach, nor had you finished your tasks for the day. A couple of other people are going to be there, too, Haley exclaimed, making sure you knew she was eager for you to come. She sighed, your gut instinct telling you to just take a day off for once and relax with your friends. Oh, come on, Bill, Haley added. That sounds like fun. Of course I'm coming, he smiled. Yay, Haley beamed. He headed back inside to gather some things for the beach. He packed a towel, some sunscreen, a good book, and some flip-flops. Also, an alcoholic beverage just for the fun of drinking on the beach. Let's go! <laughs> hey, drinking on the beach is a nice feeling. Yeah, I always my, I always tell my dad to pack twisted teas when we sit on the beach, so he's oh, there with Miller yeah. Lyon on there with my twisted tea. <laughs> <laughs> you rummaged through your drawers to find some sort of swimwear. Eventually, you found out an old bikini. Uh, eventually, you found an old bikini. You slipped over a light, airsy dress on top and some sandals and headed to the door. The four of you head towards the beach, smiling and giggling as you go. All right, I'll popcorn you here. Man, fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Haley and Leah laid their towels down in the sand and Emily began to apply sun, sun cream on her arms <laughs> you spread out your towel next to them and leaned down too as the warm sun beats down on your skin you guys began to chat and laugh sharing stories and enjoying the warm summer breeze you all were sp sprawling out in your beach towels with sunglasses covering your eyes as the sounds of the waves Luling you to a relaxed state. The salty air smells sweet as if it mingles with the scent of the sunscreen. Finally, they spelt it right. <laughs> Wait, why is this one spelled right? And yeah, then, I... like the five past ones were not. Yeah, it was like sun cream, but they weren't the same. Like, like in the same word, they were like their own words. <laughs> Haley chatted about her latest fashion endeavors, whilst Emily laughed and told stories about her adventures as a teenager. Leah, meanwhile, was focused on the book she brought, but she still managed to join, to join in on the conversation. When she joined down in the ocean, Haley suggested going for a swim. Have I seen any, like, started- I don't think any of the started people know how to swim. I've never seen them in the ocean. That'd be cool if they could. Yeah. They all jumped up eagerly, excited by the, the warm-looking waves. You ran towards the water, unaware of how cold it might actually be. It's summer, it's not gonna be that cold. <laughs> if it was winter, I would be like, yeah, that's gonna be cold, but... It's cold at first. Yeah. As you d if you dive into the waves, you heard your friends on the beach cheer you on. Your body tensed from the shock of the temperature. As you all play in the sea, you felt like a carefree kid again. The stress of the farm lake seemed to melt away as you laughed and joked with your friends. Take this! <laughs> Just throw sand at us. <laughs> they explained, giggling, slightly giggling, what's the force of a wave water 
your way. Wisps force a wave of water your way, splashing you and pushing you backwards. You sit up slightly shocked. Oh, you're gonna pay for that. You explain. How come they always switch between bold and not bold for characters? <laughs> <laughs> A white smile across your face as you held back your laughter. As all four of you messed around, splashing one another with a playful manner, you saw in your harassing that the water looked like... Wait a minute. You saw on your horizon from the water what looked like Harvey and Maru walking across the beach. <gasps> Damn it! <laughs> Our man's taken! <laughs> <laughs> Harvey's shirt was seen unbuttoned in the front with no tie like his usual attire. He seemed to be laughing a lot. You tried to shake the feeling of jealousy, but it was difficult. You told yourself you told yourself sh shouldn't be having these feelings. It's not like you and Harvey were romantically involved. You know as well as Harvey was just a naturally friendly guy and Mario was a close friend of his. I'm pretty sure she's like 18 and he's like 30. <laughs> so maybe... <laughs> Maybe don't be jealous, girl. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Even going on that tangent made me lose my play. <laughs> okay. You know well that Harvey says to Okay, you have to feel it. But he must have noticed you all in the water. You couldn't understand why he wasn't looking at you. You took a deep breath and tried to focus on enjoying your time with Haley, Leah, and Emily again. Oh, look, it's Marvin and Harvey. Haley Bean, looking happy to see them. They must be taking a break from the clinic, Emily added. Yeah. You mutter. <laughs> Are you okay, Bill? <laughs> Leah asked, clearly noticing your sunken expression. You quickly snapped out of your thoughts. Yeah, of course I am. You beam. Lying, of course. Eventually, you made your way back to your towels and began to dry off. You avoided looking at Harvey. Your mind still focused and confused on what, how you were feeling. On why you were feeling this this way right now, and also a little hurt? I'm gonna go say hi, Haley explained, making you, Emily, and Leah look at one another. You know you have to to follow and be polite. Alright, do your turn. <laughs> Alrighty. You finally glanced back at Harvey, who was already meeting your gaze. You quickly looked away again, your cheeks now burning red with an unfamiliar shyness you had not felt before. You were in a bikini, which did not seem very appropriate for your doctor to see. Although he didn't seem to look at your body, his eyes were entwined with your eyes the whole time, even when you were not looking back. Maru smiled as she saw the four of you approach. Hey, Maru smiled. Nice to see you. He held a brief smile and politeness. Hey, we were just hanging out on the beach as if it's as it's such a nice warm day, they explained, now conversing with Maru. Harvey greeted oh Haley greeted Harvey too with a cheerful hi there and struck up a conversation with him. You tried to focus on what they were saying, but your mind couldn't quite focus on both conversations at once. Haley eventually moved over to talk to Mara, too, along with Emily and Leah. An awkward silence hung in the air between you and Harvey. Hello, Bill, Harvey spoke, looking up at you from the sand. Hey, you replied, trying to stay cool and casual. I noticed that your arms are looking slightly red. Make sure you apply sunscreen regularly to ensure you don't burn, Harvey informed. It's back to sun cream. Is it sunscreen or sun cream? I believe it's called sunscreen. That's what I've always called it. Also, I really I, hope the sun isn't creaming on me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Some people would like that. Are <laughs> <laughs> we informed the doctor and him? Doctor and him making an appearance again. Thank you. I will. He replied. Maru stood up. Harvey following. I suppose we must be making our way back to the clinic now. Harvey added. It was lovely to see you. Haley beamed, giving Maru a hug. He continued to stare at your foot. Bye, have a good rest of your day. You beamed, you beamed at Maru, feeling slightly withdrawn, but trying to remain polite. You too, she smiled and replied. Harvey universally said goodbye to all four of you, simply nodding at you, specifically with a weak smile. He smiled back, returning the energy. The four of you watched them both walk away. You turned to gaze at the sunset setting beyond the horizon. The sun was now casting shades of orange, pink, and purple across the sky, echoing on the water below. The waves softly lapped against the shore, and a gentle breeze blew through the air. 
The beauty of the sunset seemed to be melting into the sea too, creating a beautiful reflection between where the sun lied in the sky and the sky. Well, this was fun, Leia smiled as if four of you watch on. I agree, Haley nodded, smiling at you. I guess we should be heading back now, Emily said to Haley, then turning to Leia. Leia nods, and you begin packing up your towels and slipping and slipping over your summer dress. You said your goodbye to Emily and Haley and set off in the direction to Leia's house as it is on the way to the farm. You gave Leia a big hug and parted ways for the time being. Alright, you can read the rest of it. Man, what the fuck? You couldn't finish this? <laughs> I wanted to give you a part. Alright. You gave Leia a hug and parted ways. Okay. You filled the sand in your shoes and the salty sea air in your hair as you made your way over to your doorstep. You let out a content sigh as you stepped inside of your cozy home. You kicked off your shoes and took a deep breath, taking in the familiar smells of your home. You settled into your armchair and let the memories of the day wash over you. The sun setting over the sea, Leah splashed you and Haley talking to you about all of her latest clothing purchases. You chuckled to yourself as you grabbed your book from the coffee table. Life in the valley was perfection. At least, almost perfection. Because you still have the strange, overwhelming feelings for your doctor that you shouldn't shake. Some weird thing, some some weird symptoms to a crush had no medicine to fix. Mm. When do we get to romance the doctor? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want. <laughs> it's a slow burner. I get yeah. It was tagged to be a slow burner, so I can't complain too much. <laughs> Right, well, I, I guess I can. I, I can still complain. God, I, I like, rizzed up Harvey as soon as I got on. <laughs> like, I, like, copied the schedule, and I made sure I had everything I needed to make sure I gave him, like, coffee every day. Wait, what made you go for Harvey? What? <laughs> well, I have no idea. Well, my first run-through, it was a pick between Elliot and Alex. And I was like, it was like eight, like, I was like seven hearts with each. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'll just leave it to luck. And I got to eight first with Elliot. And I'm like, you know what? Elliot's pretty good. And then my second <laughs> run, I had the same problem where I was like, either Harvey or Alex. And I got way further with Harvey than I did Alex. I'm like, all right. Elliot's getting <laughs> shafted again. Like, Alex is getting shafted right now. <laughs> <laughs> he got cucked twice. <laughs> But I, I don't know. He, Harvey's a nice guy. He ha he's a doctor. He knows how to provide. He still charges me every time I die in the mines, though. <laughs> but he I feel like he's a good husband. Money. Yeah, he's a good husband. I like he, his, he would be. Yeah, I love his little like flustered, like his little blushing uh, spray and everything that I get to see now that I married him. <laughs> <laughs> You're just over here, fan girl. It's it's cute. <laughs> Dude, we're literally reading a Harvey X reader right now. It's true. You can't tell me shit about fangirling too hard. That's us reading this is us fangirling. <laughs> and I need to play Stardew again. It's good. Did they do updates for that game or is it just like one version? One version. I should get it on yeah. the PC now. I have it in my wish list on Steam. <laughs> If you if you wanna gift me Stardew Valley, <laughs> oh. ask Cameron to do that. I should. We <laughs> send him a link and then just put please with the little fingers poking each <laughs> <Please>. other. <laughs> I'd be down to play with uh, Cameron as well. Hell yeah, dude! We'll have a co-op farm. That'd be fun. Fuck yeah! So if you would like to read this book, this is the best slow burner book that we that it's long as shit. Uh, you can read it down below. Uh, <laughs> if you don't want to wait for us, that is. <laughs> so, dude, speaking of Harvey, I found a Harvey X reader, but like I didn't find the like it. It was like a series, but I, uh -huh. I didn't find the first book. I found the second book, and it's it, it was like a like we married Harvey, and I guess now we're now developing feelings for Shane. And I'm like, why Shane? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, I was so disappointed. I'm like, and we're like, we're married to Harvey, but we're catching feelings for Shane. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why did you do this to Harvey? 
Talk shade. Yeah, I kind of want to read it, like, but it's long. And then like this, and then there's a second book, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. We'll read it at some point. We'll put it on the wheel after this fucking book. How many <laughs> parts are there in the book? Let me check. Yeah. Uh, I count. Oh, damn, we only like three at a time, so like seven more sessions. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, no, six more sessions, right? It's a slow, yeah. slow burner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not it's a sure. slow burner. Yeah. <laughs> also, I love that on my phone, like, because I was playing Spotify in the car, so it shows like my last song, and it's Fireball by Pitbull. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Oh god. Yeah. Alright, I guess that's gonna do it. Uh, do you even have any socials you want me to put underneath this? <laughs> like anything? Like an Instagram or none? None. Twitter? I don't have that. You don't got a YouTube channel? No. Oh. Well, anyway. No, I have like a Twitter <laughs> that I just use for like viewing fan art that's sometimes. Because like, Twitter people are. They're, they're sometimes talented. Same. All, all I use Twitter for is to check uh, Pop merch to see if I'm going to be poor that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but anyway, uh, my name is Phoenix. This is Minho. And I guess we'll see you guys next time for more Harvey. <laughs> Bye. Never get too much of this boy. <laughs> Bye.